this video, we're talking about simplifying complex fractions. And when we say complex fractions, we mean fractions that have variables or letters in either the numerator and or the denominator, or fractions where we have a fraction for the numerator and or a fraction for the denominator. Before we get to examples with letters or variables involved, I want to refresh on just a real number example. So in this first example here, we have one half divided by one fourth. So we have a fraction divided by a fraction. So there's really three fractions here, the entire fraction, and then within the numerator, another fraction, and within the denominator, another fraction. And we're trying to find out what happens when we divide one half by one fourth. Well, I have a circle here, and this is just gonna be our pie chart. If I take one half of this circle, so if I say that this here is one half of the circle, so I have one half for my numerator, what happens when I divide this by one fourth? What's my result gonna be? Well, if I draw fourths inside my one half here, so this is gonna be about a fourth here, and this is gonna be about a fourth here, and what I see is that I can fit two fourths into a half. So the result of this should be two. But how do I do that if I can't figure it out with my pie chart if I just have letters like this? Well, mathematically, what we wanna do is take the fraction that's in the numerator or whatever value is in the numerator, so in this case, one half, so we're gonna say one half, and then instead of dividing by one fourth, we want to multiply by the reciprocal. So in other words, instead of dividing, we wanna multiply, so we do the inverse operation, and then we take the reciprocal, meaning we flip this upside down. So instead of one over four, we'll do four over one. So we change the division to multiplication, and we flip this fraction in the bottom upside down, and then we just do our multiplication. So if we multiply our numerators, we get one times four is four, if we multiply our denominators, we get two times one, which is two. Four divided by two is equal to two, and that makes sense to us because when we did our pie chart here, we saw that there were two fourths that went into every one half. So we can do it this way, or we can do it algebraically. We can do the math, and we get an answer of two. So now if we apply that to problems with variables, here we have a over b divided by c. So we have our larger fraction here, Inside this larger fraction, we have a fraction in the numerator, and then we just have a single value in the denominator. One thing to note before we go ahead and do the math is that we have to indicate that the denominators cannot be equal to zero, and we have to look at all three denominators. So one thing we wanna note first is that in the denominator here we have c, but remember this is the same thing as c over one. So now we have a fraction a over b, divided by another fraction, c over one. So looking at our denominators, we'll start with the denominator within our numerator here, which is b, we have to say b cannot equal zero because remember the denominator of a fraction can never be zero because we can't divide by zero. So b cannot equal zero. This denominator is one, so we could say one cannot equal zero, but of course we know that that's always gonna be true. One is never gonna be zero. So we don't need to write that one, but we also need to say that the larger denominator here of this larger whole fraction cannot be zero. So c over one or just c, cannot be equal to zero. Now, once we've qualified those two things, once we've indicated that our denominators cannot be equal to zero, we can apply the same math that we did to this problem up here. So we're gonna take our fraction in the numerator, a over b, so we're gonna take a over b, and then instead of doing our division here, we're going to multiply instead, and then flip our c over one upside down. So we're gonna make it one over c. When we multiply across our numerators, we get a times one, which is a, and when we multiply across the denominators, we get b times c, which is b, c. We can't simplify this any further, so a over b, c is our final answer. Now if we look at a third example, here we have a over x divided by b over a plus x. So we have our larger fraction, the whole thing here. Then we have a fraction in the numerator, a over x, and then a fraction in the denominator, b over a plus x. So if we want to write our conditions like we did here, what cannot be equal to zero, we'll take the denominator from the numerator, which is x, so we have to say x cannot equal zero. We'll take the denominator from the denominator, a plus x, and say a plus x cannot be equal to zero. But we also have to say that the denominator of the larger fraction cannot be equal to zero, so we're gonna say b over a plus x cannot be equal to zero. So all three denominators we have to indicate that way but then we can just do our math. So we'll take the numerator fraction, a over x, then instead of dividing, we'll multiply, and then we're gonna flip this fraction upside down. So instead of b over a plus x, we'll do a plus x 
over b. Now this is where it gets a little bit tricky. Because we're multiplying here, we need to remember that we have to apply the distributive property and distribute this a across this a plus x. One thing you can do just to be safe is put parentheses around at least one of the fractions to help remind you. Now this looks like a distributive property problem where we want to distribute this a across the a plus x binomial term here. So our result then is going to be a times a, which we know is a squared. We leave the plus sign here. And then a times x we know is a x. We just distributed that a across the a plus x when we multiplied out the numerator. Now when we multiply out the denominator, we get x times b. We want to list our terms in alphabetic order, so we do b x. And this is the result of a divided by x divided by b divided by a plus x.